In this video, we will explain the power of the affidavit. The modern world of human affairs would grind to an immediate halt if the fundamental truths and underlying facts in any matter or transaction could not be established or asserted. A bill, an oath, a ledgering or bookkeeping, a statement of facts are the lifeblood of the legal and commercial world. These and more are all examples of the affidavit. The affidavit, when properly used, especially when leveraged by your standing as a secured party, is the most powerful instrument available in protecting, defending, and asserting your sovereignty. For this reason, it is incumbent upon you to become practiced in its use and in your ability to recognize its many forms. Affidavits back all adhesion contracts. If you are unable to recognize when affidavits are being solicited, you may be the unwitting dupe of another party's attempt to create a binding contract. By the signature of your own hand or before you became of legal age, the signature of your parent or other authority such as a physician have been signing you into bondage since you were born. Certificate of live birth, application for a driver's license and IRS form 1040, a voter's registration and every single document that the system desires others to be bound or obligated by is or requires an affidavit. When signed, they represent an oath or commercial affidavit, executed under penalty of perjury, true, correct, and complete. Affidavits may also occur in a court setting where testimony, oral, is stated in judicial terms by being sworn to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Maxims of the Affidavit before we get into the structure, form, and requirements of the formal affidavit with examples, let's develop a deeper comprehension and understanding of the purpose and important maxims that govern their use. First and foremost, in commerce, truth is sovereign, and the sovereign tells only the truth. Your word is your bond. If truth were not sovereign in commerce, that is, all human action and interrelations, there would be no basis for anything, no basis for law and order, no accountability. There would be no standards, no capacity to resolve anything. It would mean anything goes. Each man for himself and nothing matters. That's worse than the law of the jungle. Commercial law is pre-judicial. Another important concept to understand as a sovereign, if you should go before the court because it establishes the basis for keeping your matter in the private, is that commercial law is non-judicial, in fact pre-judicial, not prejudice. It is the only foundation by which government or any court system can possibly exist or function. All that courts are ultimately adjudicating and making rules about are the fundamental precepts of commercial law. Now, to get an idea of all the fun that you've been missing out on by not knowing about affidavits, not even knowing that you could ask for one, here is an example of how to leverage your knowledge of commercial law and the power of the affidavit. The Power of the Affidavit now the IRS creates the most activity of commercial collection in the entire world. The collection process is relatively valid although the IRS is not registered to do business in any state. Did you understand what you just read? The IRS is not registered to do business or perform commercial matters in any state. So how do they get all the money they get? Answer: Because you give it to them without requesting a proof of claim from them, or even if they were licensed to give you offers based on arbitrary estimations. However, this is where things get very interesting. Remember the assessment phase? There is no valid assessment. The IRS has and never can and never will and never could ever issue a valid assessment lien or levy. It's not possible. First of all, in order for them to do that, there would have to be paperwork, a true bill in commerce. There would have to be sworn affidavits by someone stating that this is a true, correct affidavit, complete and not meant to deceive, which in commerce essentially means the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Now nobody in the IRS is going to take commercial liability for exposing themselves to a lie and have a chance for people to come back at them with a true bill in commerce, a true accounting. This means they would have to set forth the contract, the foundational instrument with your signature on it, in which you are in default, and a list of all the wonderful goods and services for which you owe them money, or a statement of all the damages that you have caused them for which you owe them. To my knowledge, no one has ever received goods or service from the IRS for which they owe money. I personally don't know of anyone that has damaged anybody in the IRS that gives them the right to come after us and say that you owe us money because you damaged me. 
The assessment phase in the IRS is non-existent. It is a complete fraud. This is why these rules of commercial law come to our rescue. Solution. What can you do about it? You can issue a commercial affidavit. You don't have to title it that, but that's what it is. You can assert in your affidavit, I have never been presented with any sworn affidavits that would provide validity to your assessment. It is my best and considered judgment that no such paperwork or affidavit exists. At the end of this document, you put demands on them. They must be implicit and then you state, should you consider my position in error? You know what they have to do now, don't you? They must come back with an affidavit, which rebuts your affidavit point for point, which means they have to provide the paperwork with the real assessment, the true bill in commerce, the real sworn affidavits that would make their assessment or claims against you valid. No agent or attorney of a fictitious entity can sign an affidavit for the corporation. How can they swear as fact that the corporation has done or not done anything? They do not have the standing. They cannot and never will provide you with this. This means your affidavit stands as truth in commerce. Note, an even more streamlined and sophisticated approach in dealing with the IRS is to send them a package with a letter and an IRS power of attorney requesting a determination of your tax status. This is more powerful because you have completely drawn them into your power. Now they have two choices. Sign the papers you have given them permission to prepare on your behalf, under penalty of perjury, or give you a determination. This approach puts you out of the business of having to prove that you're not a taxpayer by offering them the opportunity to admit this themselves. Or they can fill out their own death warrant. Which do you think they will choose? Definitions. In its formal expression, an affidavit is a statement of facts that chronicle the events of a particular commercial or legal matter, reduced to writing, and sworn to or affirmed before a person legally authorized to administer an oath or affirmation such as a notary. The person making the statement is technically known as the affiant or deponent. The affidavit usually contains statements that you can attest to based on your experience and may also contain statements based on the observations of others if you indicate this by adding that the information is based on your information and belief. You may sometimes see affidavits titled and referred to as affidavits of truth or affidavits of facts. This is informal and redundant. All affidavits are about truth and facts. Here are some formal definitions and types of affidavits and the definition for declaration since this is used in the definition for affidavit from Black's Law, 6th edition. 1. Affidavit, a written or printed declaration or statement of facts made voluntarily and confirmed by the oath or affirmation of the party making it taken before a person having authority to administer such oath or affirmation. 2. Affidavit of Defense An affidavit stating that the defendant has a good defense to the plaintiff's action on the merits. For example, affidavit filed with motion for summary judgment. 3. Affidavit of Inquiry By court rule in certain states, substituted service of process may be had on absent defendants if it appears by affidavit of plaintiff's attorney or other person having knowledge of the facts, that defendant cannot after diligent inquiry be served within the state. 4. Affidavit of Merits One setting forth that the defendant has a meritorious defense, substantial and not technical, and stating the facts constituting the same. See Affidavit of Defense. 5. Affidavit of Notice A sworn statement that affiant has given proper notice of hearing to other parties to action. 6. Affidavit of Service an affidavit intended to certify the service of a writ, notice, summons, or other document or process. In federal courts, if service is made by a person other than a United States Marshal or his deputy, he shall make affidavit thereof. 7. Affidavit to hold the bail. An affidavit required in many cases before the defendant in a civil action may be arrested. Such an affidavit must contain a statement, clearly and certainly expressed, by someone acquainted with the fact, of an indebtedness from the defendant to the plaintiff and must show a distinct cause of action. 8. Declaration. A common law pleading, the first of the pleadings on the part of the plaintiff in an action at law, being a formal and methodical specification of the facts and circumstances constituting his cause or action. It commonly comprises several sections or divisions called counts, and its formal parts follow each other in this general order. Title, venue, commencement and cause of action, counts and conclusion. The Declaration at Common Law answers to the libel in Ecclesiastical and Admiralty Law, the Bill in Equity, the Petition in Civil Law, 
the complaint in code and rule pleading, and the count in real actions. The term complaint is used in the federal courts and in all states that have adopted rules of civil procedure. Elements and formats. There are two forms of the affidavit, court brief format and letter. If your matter is private, use the letter format. The court brief format requires a case number and must be in the standard legal form. If you write an affidavit in a private matter, which then ends up in the courts, you could rewrite it in legal format. However, it is not necessary since you can submit the affidavit in letter form as an exhibit. Contact us for examples of the court brief form of a generic affidavit. You can use it as a template for creating your own. The required elements in order are the title, venue, notice, introduction, statements of fact, date, and signature block, and the notary block for notary information and seal.